to HTC Invitational. I'm your host, Nims. I'm joined here by my co-host, Monk. How are you doing, man? We had an amazing, amazing top eight, and now we are heading into the top four. Yeah, pretty amazing top four, I would say. First of all, we have uh, Ties of Time, who's just bringing the most ridiculous decks ever, right? We have Forsen, who's looking to really break into the first finals he's ever been in, I believe. And then we also have Hyped, who's just really hungry for a tournament win. Since he's been doing so well on ladder just all the time, he's uh, gotten second in a Chinese tournament. But that tournament win has just eluded him. Finally, we have Strife Crow, probably like the stalwart of the group, really like leading the group up and showing that, yeah, I'm really consistent still. I can still win this tournament. Oh, yeah, certainly. And I want to remind everyone that this is a tournament sponsored by HTC. Uh, we have $5,000 prize pool. The winner is going to take $2,500. And all of those four players you, you can see right now, Force and Hype Tide, Strife Crow are already in the money. So they're kind of like winners, but uh, they want to win the, the championship and become the first HTC champion. But uh, not only the players are getting the money, you guys can get some swag as well. Monk, how the players can get some stuff? Well, what you can do is, yeah, the viewers, uh, all you have to do is tweet with the hashtag HTC Esports, as you can see on yep. there. Um, and you can you can win one of 12 t-shirts, two tablets, or one phone. Three of those items you can play Hearthstone on. 12 of them, unfortunately, you can't. Uh, the technology simply does not exist yet. I hope for the day in the future when we will be able to play Hearthstone on the t-shirts. But not yet. But Monk, we are going to see Forsen versus Hyped. Are you hyped for that match? Are we going to see Final Sun? Yeah, or well, Final Hyped? Well, I'm certainly hyped for uh, the round of four which will include Forsen. And you know what? This will actually be... Um, I would say this matchup actually probably favors Hyped because, again, Forsen is bringing an anti-Druid lineup and H Hyped, surprisingly, he hasn't brought Druid to this tournament. Yeah, uh, Hyped brought a Control Warrior. He brought uh, a Handlock. And his last deck was... Hunter? Mage? No, I believe Mage. Mech Mage. Yes. All right, so it's yep. Mech Mage, which is... Forsen should should not have many problems with Mech Mage. But then there's the Contra Warrior, and um, which is... I think there are some dragons, I believe. Are there dragons? Yep. Yeah, it's there a, are the dragons. It's a fairly standard dragon warrior that includes Nefarian, uh, Ysera, and Alex Jaza, for example. All right, we've seen uh, Hype actually stumble before. Uh, he was roping, but he had some time to rest during the trump strife Crow match. So hopefully he will be presenting some A game. The players are ready now. Forsen versus Hype, game number one, Mage versus Warrior. Yeah, certainly a pretty good start from Forsen, even though he doesn't get a Mech Warper. The Snow Chugger and the Anua Chan are really like the key cards you want to stop the Fire War Axe um, from your opponent. Not only does the Anua Chan really deal really well with Fire War Axe, but they bo both the cards actually deal well with... Uh, um, Death Spite, effectively locking out your opponent's turn four in most situations. Yeah. Um, I believe that normally this matchup will be 50-50, but with the Snow Chugger start, it can um, go in Mage's favor. It's it's really intricate matchup where cards, uh, they do counter each other out, and uh, Forsen will need to snowball. But right now, Spider Tank is an amazing pickup here. He will be able to follow up it with the Blast Mage if Spider Tank survives, and Hyped he needs to do something with that freeze. Even though he doesn't have a weapon now, he might top deck Death Spite. So we've saw, seen in previous games where, um, in this tournament, in fact, where players have decided to actually execute the, the Snow Chugger. That yeah. just shows you how powerful this card really is. Um, normally, at this point, you actually also want to get rid of all mechs on the field just so your opponent doesn't have the option to Goblin Blast Mage on turn 4, but unfortunately that's not going to be possible. Oh man, a small sequencing error from Hype, just attacking first and then playing the Armor Smith. Alright, but here Forsen can play the Blast Mage, or he can go for the Pilot to Treader. Blast Mage is a bit awkward, it can offer a lot of armor um, to Hyped. Oh, he's going to ping it. Just, um, I like it. Oh, just playing it nice and slow, I guess. And even though the Snow Chugger has died, I think the reason Forsen went for this play is because he saw how um, how much 
uh, Hyped was willing to put in to kill off that snow chugger. So I think he's making the read that Hyped has a weapon right now. He doesn't have a weapon, but it's still a pretty all right play. Yeah, um, actually, like, Forsen had a l lot of choices there. So, like, Blast Mage was the first choice, and it was probably bad because of the Armorsmith, giving too much armor to Hyped um, and developing the 5-4. Pilot of Shredder was the second one, um, not really giving much armor, developing the board, um, but then being weak to, uh, weak to the weapon. And another one was just ping, as he did. And instead of another turn, he could play Mad Scientist to try to get that Mirror Entity earlier uh, for turn 5, turn 6, when the big creature is actually being dropped. Uh, he still has time for the Mad Scientist, though. But maybe he's going to play something else. For Hyped, uh, for Hyped he's trying to limit the de damage to Max. And he's doing pretty well uh, with 38 points of armor. The Armor Smith still being online, contesting um, the shield on, on Iotron. Yeah. Um, a pretty safe play last turn would have been to play the Sludge Belcher. But I think Hyped is just really looking to uh, get that Emperor Thorazane as fast as possible. He could do so with the... Okay, it's interesting. So he... Forsen actually goes for the Blast Mage play, which means that, yes, he'll be able to clear this Armorsmith. Oh my god, so unlucky from Forsen. Not killing off this Armorsmith, which means the, he'll get even more armor. But with this play, actually, the issue is because he doesn't play the Lotheb, um, Hyped is able to coin the Thorazin now. Never lucky, Baby Rage. What do you think about uh, Sludge Belcher and the Shield Slam into the 5-4? Do you really need Torison now? Like if you play if you coin out Torison, it's going to die to the 5-4. If you play Sludge Belcher and coin the, um, the Shield Slam, you deal with a 5-4, you keep the mech on board, true. But then you are in a pretty good spot with the Sludge Belcher contesting whatever is going to get played. And you hope that you're going to get um well you do you can play Torisan behind Sludge Belcher next turn. Or you maybe if you draw a dragon, you will be able to play the Coraptor. Yeah, I think those are all fair points. I kinda really like that play. Um Yeah, just overall I think just playing the Thorazin into the bus mage is just kinda poor at this point. And for Forsen next turn, he will be able to play Shredder into Mad Scientist, which is also nice. Yeah, it's very actually very key at this point that Hype decided to use the Execute on the last big minion, which was the Spire Tank, instead of the Shield Slam. Because the, uh, the Spire Tank was already procced, so Execute was an easy play, whereas if he saved the Execute, he wouldn't be able to... Um, Oh wow, uh, look at to that. kill off the Blast Mage. Yeah, what a Go brilliant drag. draw. The Corruptor is online. Such a great card. I love the art of Blackwing Corruptor. That big Warlock. It's just amazing. It's a difficult turn still, though. I mean, do you play that card? Uh, so if you play a Corruptor, you will aim for what? For um, Pilot Shredder? Would... Well... Yeah, I guess the, the real question is... Do you want the Pilot Shredder to be able to trade into the Sludge Belcher? And I guess uh, Hyped is okay with that. Yeah, I think Torison behind Sludge Belcher is so powerful that normally you force a Fireball on the Torison. Are, right, so... are we gonna see a Brawl though this turn? There's really not many ways for Hyped to deal with this uh, Dr. Doom. Yeah, I, I like the brawl. Um, by the way, I'm, I just I was just, I was laughing because uh, Forsen is used to having a very bad pilot of Shredder minion, either a Forsen Spider, which is Weblord, or um, a Doomsayer. So he wanted to play that uh, Doctor Boom, uh, which makes sense. Like you can get a Mana Rave, and then you will not be able to play um, Doctor Boom. But uh, he's so afraid of those bad things that are stopping your your minion that he want, wanted to see what's going um, going from the pilot Shredder first. So we mentioned Brawl, and... I, I guess Brawl is one possibility, but the other one is just to trade your Thorazin in, and um, Blackwing Corruptor, the Dr. Boom, which kind of forces your opponent to make the trades. The problem with Brawl is that you are going to get a Mirror Entity on board, and uh, you don't really have a way to deal with Mirror Entity. After like these few humps, though, I think it's almost uh, clear uh, sailing skies for hyped. 
Because unless Forsen draws into the Archmage Antonitis, there's uh, not much that he can do in terms of threats. Really hope that Hype doesn't uh, rope this turn. <laughs> yeah. He didn't. He ended the turn before the rope. Okay, so again, this turn means that Hyped is going to go on the aggressive. He has so much HP that I think he feels like, yeah, he can... Oh my god, what a great draw. Our command there it yeah, is. Yeah, it's amazing, but it's not a card you want to play this turn. You don't want to play into the Brawl. Even though it's still great because it's providing a lot of damage. Uh, bomb dealing one damage on that 5-4 is not what Forsen wanted. But having a certain kill on Torison, and now how much damage is this bomb going to deal? Yep, that's great for Forsen. He's able to clear, keep boom online. Loth up to clear the, uh, to like lock the spells. But Brawl is still playable. Yeah, just unfortunately for Hype, because uh, Lothab was used, there's actually no way for Hype to both use a minion and also uh, use the Brawl in the same turn. So, that's kind of unlucky. Yeah, there's also a Mirror Entity. So, um, is there any play this turn? I think you just Armor Up Pass. You will have an amazing Brawl next turn. That's for yeah, sure. That's true. So there's something looking. Uh, he is looking forward to. Not a Mirror Entity. That's a lot of spells powering the Antonidas. So, if Forsen is playing around Ball Hill, I think he'll actually just pass this turn and uh, ping his opponent's face. Yeah, he makes the read. Like, I mean, if your opponent has, like, you kind of can make the read that your opponent has so many spells in his hand, and it's very likely for one of them to be Brawl. So, not playing around Brawl, um, Forsen is very heads up play. Alright, so this is still awkward for Hyped. Um, he will be able to play Taskmaster. Then Brawl, but if uh, Dr. Boom, like, what do you Taskmaster even? And then if Brawl's, um, if Dr. Boom survives, what? he will not be able to play around Dr. Boom, um, or like to, to, ki to kill it. He does this play, and he hopes that the minion that survives is one of the Taskmasters. This is a very important Brawl right now. If a Taskmaster survives, opposing one, he can kill it with the Corruptor. If his own survives, he just deals damage to face. And Taskmaster survives, so it's great for Hyped. Yeah, f very fair. And uh, we're definitely going to see Archmage Antonidas come down, giving him some more Fireball. So Forsen still somewhat in the game. Because Hyped actually has no way to deal with this Archmage Antonidas. Not yet, at least. Well, Grom Hellscream. So uh, wow, with Alex Traza, he might try. Yeah, exactly. I think this might be uh, just an Alex Traza to your opponent's face now, and just set up the lethal with Grom in the next turn. Hopefully, you can draw into another cruel Taskmaster or possibly a Whirlwind if Hyped indeed runs that. Even if you don't draw into anything, Alex Traza uh, into your opponent sign signifies that um, Forsen can just die. So Forsen will not be able to go 20 to face because he can just die to Alexstrasza attack and uh, Grumash or whatever. Yeah, so this might actually just be a turn where Forsen frostballs the 5-1 and double fireballs the Alexstrasza. Exactly. And then with uh, Baron Geddon, Hyped might be getting closer to, to Lethal and then forcing some stuff again. Forsen, what are you going to do here? Pilot the, pilot the Treader into Blast Mage, into Frostbolt, into Alexstrasza. I wonder. That seems interesting. Basically, Forsen needs to accumulate enough burst to finish the game. Yeah. Um, with Antonidas, he's going to attack phase for five, that's for sure. Here, I think, well, he will not be able to do much with Alexstrasza, so that's. Frostbolt is important. Doesn't set up for lethal next turn. So nine damage on board, and now height is at twenty one. So nine plus twelve, or rather plus thirteen. Yeah, that's exactly lethal. So height will actually he he can armor up. Um, in fact, he has to armor up, and 
then what? I guess just playing Grom, which kind of stalls out the game a bit more even. He can't play Gedon. But he can play the Fireworks and go for face. What now? So Fireworks, go for face, armor up, and then hope that he's actually getting um, an activator for Grimash. He will have enough. Exactly. Uh, of course, a frost de a frostbolt top deck is lethal, I believe, or have both frostbolts have been used actually? Uh, both have been used, yes. Wow, this is so close. This is a tough turn. He's going for the Grom. going for overall the safer play. Denying but the mech. It, yeah, it also gets rid of a wing condition. Whoa, I don't think that's. It's relevant in the sense that it's a taunt, I guess. Yeah, but there's the fireworks as well, so... Orson can go for board control now. Just killing the, both of those those big minions, he will be feeling safe. Like, nothing can contest this Antonidas. He has infinite fireballs, 15 health, and a taunt. And a lethal yeah, next the, turn. The other key point is that both executes from Hyped have been used. So even if Hyped... Uh, draw. He can't draw into a second execute. So even if he like procs the unstable ghoul, execute won't be able to be played. And I think that's just game over. Hyped uh, loses the first game with control warrior with dragon control warrior. Even. Excellent play by Forsen, and um, he locks his mech mage. So Forsen still has his mech shaman and um, Zemon lock, but Hyped uh, will need to win at least one game with the dragon warrior. Uh, which I'm excited about. Like Dragon decks are great. I'm super happy that we can see more of those after BRM and uh, people are trying them out. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And um, even like if Hype would go for the Fireworks face play to try to top deck something to uh, enter to like ra enrage Grommash and deal 13 points of damage, he would fail there because there was Isera on top uh, not really doing much. Uh, so a tough, tough luck for Hyped, but he still is in the game, in the top four. Game number two, starting now. Forsen versus Hyped. Yeah, certainly a pretty good start from Forsen with the double Cogmaster. Oh, and even a Flame Tongue Totem to follow that And a up. coin as well. So he can coin the Cogmaster and then follow up with Flame Tongue. And Hyped, those three cards are terrible against that start. He needs a Fireworks and he gets one. All right, so Forsen, um, Hype is just going to pass turn one. Forsen can go with double Cogmaster. There's a Rock Biter, um, not doing much right now. He wants to pick up a mech, something like a Spider Tank, maybe Powdered Shredder. Going for double Cogmaster. It's bold and it's it's a great opening. And uh, somehow Monk got sapped. I don't know what's happening. Um, so, Forsen opening with those double Cogmaster into the Fireworks. Fireworks, one of the best answers against aggro openings for Warrior. And then he also has an Acolyte of Pain. So, it's not looking terrible for, for Hyped yet. Uh, Doomhammer is representing lots of damage, uh, especially with that uh, Rogue Biter. And a Taunt Totem, amazing against that fi Fireworks as well. With Flame Tongue. Forsen will be able to deal with that Acolyte of Pain. Uh, Armor Smith is nice. So I believe it's Hyped's turn right now. Uh, playing Acolyte of Pain. Hey, speak to me. Keeping the Fireworks charge. No point in killing the Totem. At least he doesn't see one at, le uh, at the moment. But then we have the Flame Tongue, and I think we're using Rogue Biter here to clear the 1-3 is actually an amazing, amazing move. You do keep your minions on board. Uh, still, Fireworks will have to attack into that totem, I believe, but uh, it is really annoying. For Hyped, it's good that he has the Brawl, and he will be able to use it at some point. But now, Forsen is just getting a, a lead and just getting the damage done. Oh man, I'm just jumping back into this game, and I just see this Taunt Totem being so annoying for Hyped. If it were any other totem, this game would have changed drastically. Yeah. Not only that, but even though Forsen doesn't have a turn four play, the um, Doomhammer is actually the key card in this matchup, just getting that extra burst in. 
back when uh, rogues, uh, there were Miracle Rogues, Assassin's Blade was actually a tech card in that matchup just to fight off against warriors. And it's kind of like the similar, um, similar concept here, having a weapon that repeatedly damages the warrior. Sometimes it's just too much for the warrior to heal back within uh, a given amount of time. Yeah, you know, like even before um, when Shaman was actually a deck that people played, um, normal midrange Shaman, Shaman was so good versus warrior because of that Doomhammer just chipping armor every turn, um, just making shield slams really bad. And obviously it can also provide burst if you got a rogue biter, just doing 10 points of damage on one turn. There is a mech, finally, which will actually make um, Cogmaster even bigger. Yeah, now Cogmaster is in range to... Uh... Okay, so I was going to say, like, you actually do want to put the uh, Neutron in the middle, uh, right next to the other Flame Tongue Totem. But the problem with this is um, you won't be able to... Um, like, you could have possibly just killed the Cogmaster off with your Cog... Um, you could have killed the armor smith off with your cog uh, master if you had just played it previously before. And now yeah. the problem is that the everything is in whirlwind range. That's true. And if Forsen was spamming that that was a mistake. He yeah, I think he knows waiting. it. That's right. So hyped is thinking: is there any merit in maybe using the corruptor to kill the the totem here? Because he got that Isera, he will be able to, to use it now. Or do you brawl? Like, it's so weird to brawl, right? Those minions are not that high value. If you don't brawl this turn, though, um, you're risking Lotha being played no. and not being able to brawl, like, pretty much ever. And that's, I think, even though the minions are a little weak, there's just so much damage being represented on the board currently. Uh, maybe, like, if you just play it slow and steady, Blackwing Corruptor is actually pretty good as well. Just killing off the uh, Flame Tone Totem. Yeah, you put out a minion on board and you um, reduce like 4 power. It's even more like Flame Tone represents so much damage with uh, totems on its right. And now this board doesn't contest, or it actually does contest uh, the 5-4. Yeah, but power. I'm not sure if you, I'm not sure if you trade. I think, uh, just judging from your hand, you should be going for face. And just judging from the shaman deck, it's a kind of a face deck, so you might as well just go full face. Especially because the neutron is stopping both weapon attack and the five four. Um, he can go for lava bursts and uh, wisdomatic, zapomatic, but then I'm not sure. It's like it's the question really is Forsen thinking about brawl like. Is it, if he thought like this board was really brawlable, uh, brawlable, is that even a word? But uh, he might think like type doesn't have a brawl here, so he will just go for a uh, for a play that will provide more damage over time. All right, he's going for Lothab, so Lothab is more safe, and it's uh, very similar in power because he has those minions, he is protecting them. Well, Lothab is a five-five; it is representing a lot of damage. Yeah, exactly. The Whirling Zapomatic only really represents 6 damage. That's assuming if your opponent can't deal with it. So, like you said, it's very similar overall. Um, also, you can always fit in the Whirling Zapomatic later on in a later turn. So it's just more versatile. On turn 6, if you draw into a Fire Elemental, um, you'll be able to use that as well. And Lotheb into Fire Elemental, I'd say, is pretty good. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to overload it if you don't have to. All right, so now hyped can brawl, can shield block. Um, Torison is nice, but it's not really achieving much. He's expecting to get, oh, at least six points of damage next turn if he if he deals with a nitron. So if he kills a nitron here, there there are no max. There is six points of damage. That's, it's not that much. And if you play Torison, you actually put a minion on board that has to be, um, he has to be killed. Like. I don't know if you can leave Torison with Warrior for two turns, because then Alex Traza is a is a possibility earlier. Oh, it's really interesting. Uh, Hyped actually did decide to attack at all, and I wonder if that clues Forsen in to the fact that he has a brawl. Yeah, this is. Interesting. I think. Uh, I think the reason he didn't attack was first of all, you don't want to get rid of the uh, 
the Taunt Totem because it's another body for Brawl. And you also don't want to get rid of the shield from the Neutron because if you get rid of the shield, then it gives your opponent the opportunity to trade into uh, your minions and possibly kill off the Neutron, which would be another good body to leave up. Yeah, he will also have to use the weapon to, to kill a Neutron. Um, the merit was that you deny the mech, at least, right? So you do reduce the damage on on the Cogmaster. But uh, Forsen, unfazed, he's just going to go for face with uh, what he has right now. The Doomhammer is representing lots of damage. 16 damage over the course of 8 turns. 4 damage yeah. now. So Forsen will have what? Like 4, 9 points of damage from the Doom uh, Doomhammer and Lava Burst next turn easily. Yeah, I say like this play actually plays around Brawl fairly well as, as well. Because like, are you really going to Brawl this board? It's not really threatening. And even if you do Brawl the board, let's say the Lotheb survives. And Forsen can possibly just instantly win on the next turn. Yeah, but then Hyped has a really nice Sludge Belcher, uh, Armor Smith play to gain some health and uh, set up a, a position. Like, he has to kill that Anoyotron. Come on, like, Hyped. I know Anoyotron seems like a low value target, but you have to man up and kill it. It's so exactly. annoying. It, yeah, the past few turns have all been uh, about Hyped trying to set up for a Brawl and Forsen trying to counter that by making Brawls awkward. So it might be um, behooving to Hype to just play for board control instead of going for the Brawl, and only use the Brawl in, if it's like a last case emergency. Yep, we're seeing a game of bros and brawls. <laughs> so um, he is probably going for the Sludge Butcher, just uh, playing Armor Smith now. Oh, he's going to Brawl because Armor Smith is always surviving that. Wow, pretty amazing. So, so uh, again, like we survive? said, yeah, if um, if this Lothab survives, Hype to actually could be in a lot of trouble. And, okay, unfortunately it's not the Lothab. Oh, wow, it, it is Armor Smith. It's an Armor Smith. It always survives. Kit Kats didn't lie. Wow, that actually puts, that actually puts Hype in a, an amazing position. Yeah, but, he, cleared the, he cleared the board. But then again, like, look at this uh, hand. How much burst is there? Five plus a potential six, possibly 11 damage burst on the next turn. Unfortunately, if that's Forsen... still not enough. Yeah, it's still not so, enough. And there is a Sludge so, Belcher coming down as well. Exactly. Hyped would need to not play the Sludge Belcher, and Forsen would need to draw into a Rock Biter for um, any lethal scenarios to occur. Rock Biter will be amazing. 10 points of damage coming out from the weapon. But you know what? Hyped? I think Hyped has Harrison Jones, right? Uh, I know at least Trump had Harrison Jones. I'm not sure about Hyped. Hyped had Harrison Jones in a Mech Mage. I'm not sure about Warrior. Probably not because he has the dragons. So he's running Corruptors and uh, a lot of stuff that we've seen that the normal Warrior runs. Knight, uh, Armorsmith with Sludge Belcher. Such a great combo versus Aggro Dex. Yeah, quite unfortunate for Force that he has to at least use some of his burn in order to kill off the Sludge Belcher and give his opponent more armor. So, in effect, this Lava Burst, it did, uh, it healed his opponent for one damage. Alright, so Force going for the Armorsmith. It, it dealt enough damage, mental damage. Oh, there is Grom. So Grom will enable maybe a possibility to, to kill Forsen, but now still Hype has a lot of trouble even without the Grom. Is this a Sarah turn? I think it's Sarah is a bit too slow. You're still worried about the damage on the board, so I would say Grom is almost certainly the play. So I think you actually, uh, yeah, use the Grom right now and then attack with your weapon into the Pilot Shredder, because um, if a taunt comes out of the Pilot Shredder, then you could be in a, quite a bit of trouble. Wow, look at that spare part. That's a taunt spare part. You can taunt up the one free. Yeah. Or, or you can taunt, taunt up Sarah next turn. Oh yeah, taunting up Sarah would actually be pretty huge. Yes. And we know that... Yeah, we know that um, the Mech Mage, or rather the Mech Shaman only runs one usually one uh earth shock and zero hexes so yeah this taunt is going to be really insane for him to get past 
he actually probably has to use a crackle on it. And using like damage, direct damage on minions, certainly not what Forsen wants right now. Oh yeah, that's true. And also he might be forced to use the... Um, I guess he can attack the weapon because right now he has... Uh, if, if he picks up uh, Rogue Biter, he will have that free too. He might even use stealth on it. Oh, he will not have enough mana. Oh, wow! He face tanks Gromash. Wow, can't believe it. If there is a Rock Biter, do you want to have two charges or one charge? I think it's fine to not attack here. Yeah, it just gives him one or one more out. But here's the issue. Even if you draw Rock Biter, I, is that even lethal? That's going to be... Yeah, it's definitely lethal. But you, if you draw Rock Biter, you still have the potential for uh, the Whirling Zapomatic to survive anyway. Yeah, that's true. But uh, do you really have to attack? Like, it doesn't change if you attack now or, or later. Uh, they may, maybe the only card that changes stuff is Power Maze. Like, if you join into Power Maze, you're essentially losing damage. But uh, I would assume that there is a big chance that this um, Zapmatic is going to die. And yet again, like, Zapmatic, have you noticed that Zapmatic is having a, a lightsaber? Like, it has a green Jedi lightsaber. A couple of them, actually. It's like a small mechanical Jedi. And if you have a golden version, it has the red lightsaber. So it's a Sith. <laughs> Pretty sick. Pretty sick, Nimsh. Um, wow. That Corruptor. Even, yeah, Corruptor is going to be huge. And it's like uh, one of the other reasons why Dragon, um, Dragon Warrior is seemingly better than Control Warrior these days. I would certainly say so. It has like just, it has fire elementals basically. What Hypes is basically saying is like, okay, you're Shaman, you have a pretty nice card, it's called the Fire Elemental. Uh, I, I guess I want to play it as well. Oh wow, there's a Fell Reaver. That's stealthed. Oh, what a great combo here. So again, Monk, imagine there's a big Fell Reaver, it's almost like a building, and you can't see it. You know, it's somewhere there, standing in the middle of the field, you can't see it. Yeah, it's almost like the... Um... The Ogre Ninja, the rogue card, it's like yeah. a huge ninja that's trying to be disguised as a tree. But you know what? A lot of people fall for it. Even Wisps fall for it because they're circling around him all the time. That's true. Maybe the, the Stealth card should be renamed to be Blind card instead of Stealth. So it blinds you. You can't see the target. Or Invisibility. Yeah, it's possible. Okay, so... Um, What's the situation here? Just milling cards doesn't do much, uh, but you want to get some defenses up. Sludge Belcher looks uh, looks great. Um, is there any way to do to lethal here? Uh, he's two damage off, right? Or if he plays a weapon, that's uh, nine plus two. He's one damage off actually. What now? With uh, even though even though like milling your opponent probably isn't going to happen, uh, still. Whatever card that you play, you get inf more information about your opponent's deck. Because Hyped is such an experienced uh, tournament player, he's seen this Mech Mage deck, or rather this Mech Shaman deck, so many times that he, um, once he sees the cards that are milled, then he'll know uh, what cards are remaining in the rest of Forces' deck, and he'll be able to play around that. Well, he definitely needs to armor up, because if there is... Um... Oh, actually, even if there's an Earth Shock, it's still fine. Because Forsen has 12 damage on board with that Fell Reaver. So he would need yeah. two cards. He would need an Earth Shock yeah, and a Burst. Yeah, the key is there's um, actually no cards in this Mech Shaman deck that actually draw cards. Yeah. So, Hype just setting up for lethal. Oh, Playing Nerf as many cards as possible. And he gets Dr. Boom! That does absolutely nothing, so... With this, I believe, Hype will have lethal Death Spite and Taskmaster. Well, actually, this Taunt Totem was pretty huge. Um, if Hype didn't have a weapon, for instance, then it actually would have made the difference. Yep, with the weapon, that's enough. So Hype is going to take game number two versus Force and tie up the series. There's a second Taskmaster. Okay. So Hype uh, will be going for the tilt tilting play, just showing his opponent, hey, I. Uh, you gave me... Uh, I top-decked the card that I needed to kill off this Taunt Totem. 
Yeah. So double Taskmaster finish and a BGH to the face. Sick. This is going to tilt Forsen. Uh, that is stronger so. than that. I think Forsen is kind of like the the father of BM, actually. So Too I don't think Peter. anything will tilt well anything will tilt Forsen. Alright, so um Hype was able to lock his uh warrior. Control Warrior is out. Uh, Control Dragon Warrior is out. And uh, Mech Mage is out for Forsen. Hype still has a handlock. And he still has Mech Mage himself. Then Forsen still has that Mech Shaman. And he has the Zeman lock. So it's kind of like Mech versus Mech. And handlock versus Zeman lock. What's the matchup there? Yeah, I have to say, like, I feel like handlock generally will be favored against. Um... A lot of these matchups favored against Zoo because of the controlling nature of the deck with Molten Giants and Sunfury Protectors to end it off. And the same thing against Mech Mage. Um, Mech Mage and Zoo are both decks that don't have a lot of direct damage to finish an opponent off. They rely more on board control and minions to deal damage. Of course, Mech Mage does have Frostbolt and Fireball, but compared to a Hunter, it's not as. Um, the, the burst is not as consistent, I'd say. Oh man, so we are here, game free, Forsen versus Hyped. We're going to see some impressive aggro exchanges, minion for minion. Kind of a weak start for Forsen, unfortunately. Mm, but you are know you sure? What? Like, the... double Void Walker here and a follow up by Dire Wolf Alpha seems good. Yeah, definitely agree. But I think uh, Forsen would definitely want something like a Flame Imp early on. But with the combination of Darwolf Alpha and Voidwalker, I think he'll take it at least. I would say that Forsen will know that uh, this is Mech Mage, but Forsen is not a guy that's studying a lot, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if he knows this is Mech Mage. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to note that because Direwolf Alpha is in, the, in this deck, it's probably going to be more of a lower curving zoo. And I think this kind of deck is actually more favored against Mech Mage than the uh, the Demon Zoo that we've been seeing that's more popular lately, because it's more consistent in the early game. And all that's all you need to do, all you need to be is be consistent against Mech Mage as a Zoo player, because you are the player that uh, can get board control more easily with cards like Abusive Sergeant and Dire Wolf Alpha. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, Forsen's, ver uh, Forsen's version is the, um, the Zoo Demon Lock, so... Uh, it, it's still it's still amazing. Like right now, oh wow, second wolf. You can actually go for for face here. Like he doesn't even have to trade. Uh, but well, the nine gamak is is good, and also it's kind of forcing hype to to clear those void walkers. Just uh, playing a minion into the field. Do you play like or do you ping? This is a a tough call. I I kind of like uh, just playing the minion here. Because uh, if you just ping, then all you can do is play the Cogmaster, which means the Direwolf Alpha will be able to trade into it, which is certainly what you want. This board makes it much more awkward for Forsen to deal with. And now he has the Mortal Coil, which is actually amazing. We'll be able to deny the mech before turn 4. Yeah, and he can actually replay the Direwolf Alpha, so that um, this Cogmaster won't just get free trades into the Voidwalkers. It actually worked out really well for Forsen. Yeah, he stopped the, the early aggression. There is the pilot to Shredder on turn 4 for Hype. But, um, well, the Cogmaster is going to trade into the Voidwalker and that's it. Yeah, 3-2 trading into a 2-1. But you know, it's like pilot to Shredder is one of those cards that can, um, can make you come back from a tricky situation. Because it is spawning a minion, it is hard to deal with. If Hype gets a good minion from that Pilot Shredder, and then he has another Pilot Shredder, and it's 2-1. So this game is far from over. There will be a lot of minion exchanges here. Oh, Implosion will be pretty huge. Um, I but think because he might he's go drawn, for Implosion. Because he's drawn Implosion, though, I think it's actually more likely for him to play both the... Um, the knife juggler and the new reenact to set up for our future implosion, but he goes for the more of a value here. Oh and wow! I think this, yeah, this is because um, he really doesn't want his opponent to have a mech. 
Because the one way for Mech Mage to swing back into this game is with a Blast Mage on turn four or five. Yeah, that's true. Also playing um, Nerubian Egg and, and Juggler was kind of an en endangering the, the Juggler. If, if there would be a Blast Mage, that was just terrible. But the fact that the, um, there is a ping, if there's a, fro a simple Frostbolt, Frostbolt into Juggler and then ping into the Voidwalker. Pilot to Shredder attacking into Dire Wolf just uh, almost clears the board, leaves only Nurban Egg. So that implosion was was definitely good. And uh, lucky for Forsen, there was no Unstable Ghoul or Explosive Sheep to counter this uh, this minion board. Exactly. Uh, not very common minions to drop off of Pilot Shredder, but I guess something you do really have to account for. We've seen um, Explosive Sheep twice in this tournament already. Exactly. Both of those ended up, uh, I believe, hurting the player with the what with the um, piloted shredder. Yeah. All right. So here, a very tough turn. You would love to play something good. Uh, you want to ping the two one and maybe attack into the two two. That Dark Wolf Alpha is going to buff those imps, and uh, that is going to do so much damage. Yeah. Um Hyped is trying to play as many minions as possible that have odd amounts of health because uh, he doesn't want the, the Star Wolf Alpha to get too much value, I'd say. What do you think about Bane of Doom into the 5-1 to try and get a Morganis? With so many M's, it's so tempting. Yeah, it's this is a bit more consistent play, I would say. And again, a uh, chance for the Explosive Sheep or an Unstable Girl here. And that's a free two. It's great for Forsen. He is able to go through and uh, takes over the board. Uh, a very tough situation for Hyped. Megmage doesn't really have a clear. It's mostly uh, dependent on the on the minions that he's, uh, he's going to play. The Pilot Shredders didn't do much. And there is still the Bane of Doom and Power of Whelming as well. Not really good. Uh, wow. Okay, Power of Woman can be played on turn 6 uh, after Lothep, so just getting rid of Lothep, getting a 4-4, even an extra knife is a gift. Yeah, pretty, pretty dominating board position for Forsen. <laughs> Dr. Boom comes down, pretty obvious play, but um, there will be some Bane of Dooms coming down on this turn, and I think it'll be... Uh, Okay, he's actually going to clear off this Dr. Boom. Well, he can attack with the Nerugan and then... Um... He has to... Um, I think he has to attack phase here. Because the Boom bots... They definitely have the opportunity to kill off these minions after the knife jungle hits one of the bots. Yeah, that's right. Flame him is really bad. But uh, definitely good play by Force in attacking first. And now, like... This, like the boom bots are actually one of the only opportunities for Forsen to um, for hype to, to return. Come back, for, yeah, 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 exactly for hype to return to the board. So hype is uh, having a, a decent situation here, even though he's so much behind. Uh, he is still behind on health, but Anoyatron and Technician is five mana. He still has three more. If he gets. We can even play Technician to get a spare part right now because the bombs are max. He gets a Rewinder. That's actually terrible. But he has to use yes. those bombs to clear. Exactly. Um, he, First bomb. Uh, oh, a little unfortunate. It's not bad. It's like he can still yeah, clear here. I, yeah, ideally he would have wanted... Oh, that's pretty bad. One to face the worst possible outcome. I think ideally he would have wanted, uh, uh, first of all, the minions to die, but also he would have wanted a taunt um, spare part, the Rusty Horn, for example. So is he going for Harvest Golden here? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, an alternative was pinging the Dire Wolf and playing an Iotron. I don't think he had enough mana for that. Oh wow, Malganis. Especially having that Void Caller in hand. So that actually makes you want to play Void Caller a bit more. Instead of Bane of Doom? Exactly. Even though I think Bane of Doom, before this uh, Melganis was drawn, it was overall the stronger play. I think it's fine uh, to tap. Yeah, exactly. The, the benefit here is, wow, he goes for the 
Clear. For the pain of doom, he likes his demons and he is getting a. Oh my god! Doomguard. Wow! What is Hype yeah, so going I, to do? I think the reason he went for the Bane of Doom there is because he knew there's a huge possibility for this demon to survive the next turn. So the Melganis could actually just buff it on the very next yeah, turn. Yeah, that's true. If he will get a Melganis though, Melganis into Melganis. We are Melganis, we are eternal. I think he's pretty uh, happy with this draw. Especially since uh, he has... He would have had lethal if uh, there weren't an annoyance on. Yeah, that's true. And uh, he didn't proc the Ruby and Egg as well. Alright, so hyped fighting, trying to get that advantage on board and do stuff. But it's hard. Flame it. Flame it is not great. It's actually terrible. Is there any specific draw that um, Forsen can, can get to win here? Win right away. Power of Warming is definitely interesting. Yeah, I think you... Um, I don't know, I'm not sure. He has to consider whether he wants to use it now to get a 4-4 immediately, or if um, he needs it for burst in the later stages of the game. I think I like the 4-4, but on the other hand, it's still 4 points of damage. You deny... You don't even deny the mech here. I don't know, it's tough. I think it's fine to attack. But I wouldn't mind keeping yeah. it as well. Yeah, so now that you have four minions on the board, um, your opponent can ping one of them, but he needs at least... He needs a taunt, a frostbolt, or a fireball in order to deal with the rest of the minions. Well, Hype doesn't really have much. He can attack face with a 5-4, or maybe kill the 3-2 uh, with a 5-4, and then use the rewinder and replay uh, the blast mage. But what then? <clears throat> Just... Um, Hope that he deals one damage to Doom Guards, two damage to to Nerubian. Yeah, or like he has split in a way so he can finish off stuff. Yeah. Time rewinding the Blast Mage seems like the only play here in order to possibly survive. Can he like time rewind play? This is five mana, mirror entity. What? Yeah, he can basically Oh, uh, this would be tough. He hopes there's no yeah, demon. He... Exactly. Uh, he will be, be really indeed. sad. Yeah, in a lot of these situations, there is no demon in um, the demon lock's hand. But unfortunately, this is by far the worst case scenario. A Mulganis in the hand, and I think this is game over. Forsen is up. like, look at Forsen's face. <laughs> Forsen has this expression like, this was a trap, mate. You stepped into it. Oh, man. Okay, so just um, brilliant. Forsen is uh, winning game three, extending lead to, lead two to one versus Hype, and now Forsen is only left with his Mech Shaman, that's uh, really bursty, and he needs to win just one game versus Hype's uh, Dax. Uh, but the players are re ready really fast, and uh, game number four is going to start here: Mech Shaman versus Mech Mage. Mech Wars has begun. Yeah, so the big difference here is one player has the um, he has the power mace and the other player has uh, both secrets and the goblin blast mage. And in that battle, I'd usually give the advantage to the goblin blast mage, even though if uh, the shaman has an early power mace, then he can kind of try to get rid of as many mechs as possible. And then Hyped won't be able to use the um, the blast mage at all. Oh wow, that hand from Hyped is so bad. And then it proved a bit, but it's still no good. There are no mechs. And there is a power mace. So it looks really good for Forsen now. Yeah, especially with the uh, Neurotron added in. Buffing in a Neurotron is one of the, the best things you can do. But you know that Spider Tank is actually alright. So um, it's still on the side of that side. Yeah, Forsen just trying to set up as quickly as possible for that power miss um, into a Neurotron. Fortunately for Hyped, he has a minion that uh, deals well with uh, this power miss. And wow, that's a huge draw from Hyped. Yeah. <laughs> 
just that Harrison Jones is that Doomhammer. That would be an amazing thing. And uh, I'm not sure if Forsen will be expecting that. But for now, it's all about the early game. There is a mirror entity. Not really able to clear the free four. Giving her opponent a Neutron. I think that's um, okay, I guess. But yeah, you can. Your Neutron can be bigger than your opponent's. My Neutron is bigger than yours. At least Forsens is bigger than Hypes at this moment. Nice so now um, Hype can do what? Tinker Town Technician, get a spare part, get a 4 4, and maybe even play the spare part. You can possibly consider pinging here too, just to uh, uh, clear off this uh, Noachan completely. Uh, what about using Frostbolt as well? Just uh, ping Frostbolt, kill it with 1 2, and then go for face, free damage, keep your mech untouched. Oiled and ready for action. Well, the thing is, uh, Shaman has a very hard time dealing one damage, so I don't think it's as relevant to keep your uh, spider tank as healthy in this matchup as it might be against uh, a fellow mage or a warrior, perhaps. I'm just looking at that fell reaver and I'm thinking, what will be the way to deal with it as a mage? Apart from fireball, maybe. Right? Like, Fell Reaver on 5 will be so powerful. Yeah, you know what the counter to Fell Reaver is? Just play as many cards as possible and ignore it because um, all your minions are just so, so annoying to deal with. If you if Fell Reaver attacks into a 3-1, I think you're pretty happy. If he attacks into a Snow Chugger, you're also pretty happy. And if you if he attacks into a Neurotron, you're just ecstatic. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Okay, so um, here is still minion trading, minion trading, technician is nice. Um, maybe using that Frostbolt here. Oh, a Freeze! The Neutron is also yeah. great. Yeah, you said the the Mech Mage doesn't have a lot of counters to Fell Reaver. I guess you're wrong here. Also freezing Forsen, so it's not that tempting to get uh, to play that Doomhammer. Yeah, it's uh, kind of an anti-synergy here between the Snow Chugger and the Harrison Jones, unfortunately. And this kind of yep. forces Forsen not to play the Doom ha Hammer which is exactly what Hyped would want. But uh, Hyped can't be too sad about, the, uh, about that. He has an amazing board, and he still has that Frostbolt. He has the Freeze. He's on a great way just um, to just kill Forsen with all those mechs. Just going for face here. He has the tempo advantage. Forsen is, is forced to trade, Yeah, but can't even really trade. Yeah, um, fortunately for Forsen, at least he has the the fire elemental but i still i don't think there's any way for forsen to come back in this game there's just too much damage on board in fact 10 damage on board and yeah against the frostbolt that's just game over forsen concedes this match and we're going into the rubber match game five of hyped versus forsen it's gonna be headlock, headlock versus shaman yeah and um what do you think about that match? So uh, it's not a standard shaman, it's a kind of mech shaman, right? So it's more aggressive versus handlock. If uh, handlock is not able to stop... So like, how it goes versus mech mage is that mech mage has to gamble that there are no molten giants and no heal bot and just yellow, uh, go for face, smork, and hope for the best. Uh, but with shaman, you have a bit more, uh, a couple more tools. Like you do have the um, earth shock, so... You might be able to go for the big minions. You might be able to go for the taunts. Uh, we've seen this specific matchup uh, in the final of DreamHack Bucharest where Firebat won on turn three with the Mech Shaman versus Handlock. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, um, speaking of DreamHack Bucharest, this is uh, Forsen's lineup is actually the same exact lineup that Firebat used to get second place at DreamHack Bucharest. It was, uh, both are very anti-Druid lineups with Mech Mage, Mech Shaman, and uh, the Demon Lock, the Demon Zoo. But I would say that Firebat's lineup at the time was probably slightly better because Druid was slightly more popular then than it is now. All right, so game number five is going to start. Forsen versus Hyped. The winner advances to the final. The loser is eliminated. Are we going to see final Sen? Are we going to see final Lyped? A person hyped for final. 
Nice. Makes sense. Um, well, hyped at least he he drew into some pretty good cards. He has the Watcher plus Sun Fairy combo. He even has a Dark Bomb in order to uh, deal with the Whirling Zappomatics in the early game. Yeah, it's looking good for hyped. Um, he has the he has the tools to respond to whatever Forsen is going to play, and Forsen should be happy with his hand as well. Like if there is no Dark Bomb, like. Giving them playing the Muck Warper now and then following up with a Mech Warper into uh, Zapomatic is great. Like even the, if Mech Warper is getting killed, he can still uh, Mech Warper and Zapomatic next turn. Yeah, this is kind of a to be honest, it's kind of bait for hyped. He's like, okay, show me the dark bombs, and the very next turn he can go for uh, an even bigger threat with the Whirling Zapomatic. That's right. But then hyped has the, um, the Taunt and an Ancient Watcher. And the heal bot as well. So it if seems he goes Ancient Watcher, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so if he goes for Ancient Watcher and uh, and a taunt, there is nothing that Forsen can really do. Um, it's like he can play Flame Tongue and kill both minions, but then he is losing a lot of burst. Yeah. The um, the issue with that play is Hyped might be worried. Oh, man that he might not have a good turn 4 play if he goes for a uh, coin Ancient Watcher Sunfury on this turn. He'll have to rely on at least one minion surviving in order to use the Defender of Argus. I think just given what your opponent has though, it's probably a fairly good play. W what are really the answers for um, for this Ancient Watcher? I guess a Rock Biter, Flame Earth Tongue Totem isn't that great. Earthshock, I mean, if you're going to Earthshock an Ancient Watcher, I mean, be my guest. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I I like Ancient Watcher and uh and the Sun Fury. You have a taunt, you have a two free. Your opponent has to do something with a four or five taunts, and uh, you have an amazing turn four play, which is Defender Vargas. So two free, pretty good minion. Trades well with Zapmatics. Kills Cogma uh, Cogmaster. So okay, I guess this play, he's threatening Shadow Flame essentially. He's yeah. bluffing the Shadow Flame. So Forsen might be just tempted to um, go for the Flame Tongue, kill this Ancient Watcher. At the same time, though, he's able to deal 5 damage to his opponent's face. And that's still pretty good. Yeah, I think like going for... Uh, this actually works for Forsen. Because with the Flame Tongue, he deals damage with Zapomatic instead of just attacking into the 4-5. He still kills the 4-5, but with the second attack. So he is gaining basically 5 points of damage here for free. And um, Forsen will be able able to develop the the Cogmaster as well, or a Totem if he wants to. At the same time, though, I feel like this play signals to your opponent, oh, hey, I don't have a Hellfire. Because if he did have a Hellfire, there's no way he'd be going for this type of play. So Forsen yeah. can actually... Uh, I'd say he can actually just fully commit to the board here. And even though this isn't a full commitment, it's still pretty good. I think uh, Forsen can also go for face fully, like two times. Because, um, like, killing the Ancient Watcher is obviously better. Because we are thinking, like, hey, there, there might be a Shadow Flame and you want to get the value there. Like, even the Taunt uh, is just giving him a free attack. But sometimes you kind of want to YOLO uh, with those burst decks and be like, okay, I assume you don't have anything in your hand. Like, you don't have a Taunt Giver, you don't have Shadow Flame, you don't even have that Hellfire and just YOLO it and try to grab the victory before your opponent is able to draw anything. Yep. Certainly, like, it's kind of an innocuous board, but that Flame Tongue Totem is certainly very threatening. Um, it's just that this deck, compared to a Mech Mage, just has a lot of more threatening creatures. The Mech Warpers, essentially, are always going to be threatening. Then you have the Flame Tongue Totems, then you have the Whirling Zapomatics. And against the class that it's, they're very limited in the amount of direct damage they can do, basically the double um, dark bobs, um, it can be very hard for them to deal with. Absolutely. So Hype goes for Lothep to, uh, to block the spells. And uh, with Defender of Argus and even a Taunt Giver, he will have a lot of good cards to dismantle this board uh, next turn. He was threatening Shadow Flame, so there's no reason that Forsen uh, suddenly will start assuming there is no Shadow Flame there. A positioning Pilot Shredder on the left, uh, just in case that um, Flame Tone Totem survives. Do you kill Lothep here? You play. You still play around the Shadow Flame. Yeah, so Forsen's line of play was against Shadow Flame on the previous turn. 
So if you played around Shadow Flame once, you just have to go with the same line of play, or you're just seen as inconsistent. Yeah. And uh, this is troublesome for hyped. He might go for heal bot here, just heal up and uh, play a free free minion. It's not re it's not really doing much. Maybe just the dark bomb the. Um, the flame tongue. What does it do? You you get four less damage, and uh, oh man, this is so awkward. Can you tap? If you if you if you tap, what do we want to get? Molten giant. Uh, perhaps a silence. But yeah, eventually drawing into your molten giants is your end goal. And I guess tapping would bring you a step closer. I, I, to be honest though, at this point, I think the only way you can win is with Molten Giants. The creatures on the board are just so sticky. Uh, not only is the Pilot Shredder have a death rattle, but the uh, Spider Tank is at 4 health, which is just one out of range uh, out of a Hellfire. Wow. You also, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. with. Um... Yeah, there's also like... You, you've given up your uh, Ancient Watcher, so you can't even draw it to Shadow Flame. To Shadow Flame plus Ancient Watcher. I just wanted to say that there is Dr. Boom now. And um, apparently Forsen is not going for Fire Elemental. Just uh, because he wants to keep it as a final burst. But Dr. Boom top deck was uh, amazing on, on 7. Uh, there is some AoE for Hype now. But not really a way to follow up with... Um, if you have a moral coil to keep that spider tank, as you mentioned, four health is super annoying for handlock. Yeah, without the molten giants, there's just very little way for a hype to come back. I think he has to take a risk and play Thorison. Okay, so if you play Thorison, there's ten damage on board. Yes. Three more from hands, so it's like 13. You drop to two, and also um, it will depend if your opponent is playing versus Molten Giants or not, so he can have an awkward play and like kill Thorison. And next turn you will have a possible, let's say, uh, heal bolt for four and defend of Argus maybe. Like, it really depends what, what your opponent does. Like If your opponent um, ignores Thorison, you will use the heal bolt and defend of Argus to turn up both and kill something with Thorison. If your opponent kills Torison, you still have a, a decent amount of health and you have better plays coming uh, going forward. So instead, Hype goes with the play that just really keeps him alive. And I think, oh wow, Force is just curving out perfectly into yeah. Dr. Boom, into Ragnaros. There's right now actually no way for uh, Hype to clear this board. Nothing like a, he would need a Shadow Flame first of all, but he also needs an activator for the Shadow Flame. Something like a, one of his giants, and unfortunately, neither one of his potential giants are enough to uh, activate the Shadow Flame with. Again, Seems the like Shadow he's... Flame, the Shadow Flame that he doesn't have. Yeah, the Shadow Flame that he doesn't have. He needs a giant that he doesn't have. Well, he has a giant, but it doesn't work. He can't even deal with the with the boom here. So, um, a really bad situation. Can you? Uh, Guess he can play slash Belcher and uh, are you dead? You certainly are with Ragnaros in hand. <laughs> yeah, Monk. I don't, it, I don't see any lines of play. Um, I mean, you can, you can you can sludge Belcher and then Sun Fury it up maybe to give it double taunt. Double taunts, uh, triple taunts. Uh, considering the the sludge token being a taunt as well. But, but Monk, is, is Forsen actually going to advance to the final? Yeah, it seems like it. Very surprising um, for some players. But I think uh, a lot of players do forget the times when Forsen was ranked number one on the ladder on both the NA and EU servers. So definitely a very brilliant accomplishment for Forsen. Getting to, I believe, the first finals of any tournament that he's ever entered. Oh yeah, Forsen was always a, a very competitive player and uh, bringing good decks, uh, not making mistakes. And here we can see it's paying off. So after after that attack with Ragnaros, Forsen is going to advance to the finals of HTC Invitational, defeating Hyped 3-2.
Uh, Hyped played really well. Uh, we've seen some great decks and um, good plays as well. And I'm impressed. So good showing for Temple Storm uh, going to the top four. He's going to get uh, some money prize as well. So not bad, but you know, he really wanted to get to the final as well. But Forsen is the man of the hour. Forsen is going to advance to face either Strife Crow or Tides of Time. Yeah. Uh, both will be very hard matchups. Ties of Time, of course, bring very wacky decks. Um, decks that Forsen certainly has not practiced against. Meanwhile, Strife Crow is one of the most respected players of our time. So either player, whoever advances to the finals, will be a tough matchup for Forsen. All right, so Strive Crew versus Ties of Time coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We are going to get back after a short break. Stay tuned.